In this video, I'm going to be showing you Pinecone Serverless and why it's an exciting addition to the AI App Developers Toolkit. We'll explore the key features and I'll guide you through a hands-on example by the end of this video. So don't worry if you've never used Vector Storage or Pinecone before. This example that I'm going to be showing you is designed so that anyone, regardless of their previous experience, can easily get started in incorporating it within their project. So let's dive in. Pinecone Serverless is a new development in vector databases, offering the potential for up to 50x cost reductions. It is currently in a public preview and you can try it now with $100 in free credits. So some of the distinct features within Pinecone Serverless include the separation of reads, writes, and storage aiming to reduce costs for various workloads. There's also a unique architecture that enables efficient low latency vector searches across extensive data sets at a lower cost. Within Pinecone Serverless, there's custom developed indexing and retrieval algorithms for effective vector search from blob storage. There's a multi-tenant compute layer that facilitates a serverless experience freeing developers from infrastructure management. And just some notes for the public preview phase of Pinecone Serverless. The pricing model may not be fully suitable for high throughput applications quite yet. Right now, serverless indexes are only available within AWS. However, availability in Google Cloud and Azure are coming soon. To access the $100 in free credits, you will have to attach a credit card to your account to be able to use these credits. If you haven't used Pinecone before, Pinecone's goal is to assist engineers in building advanced AI applications such as semantic search and recommendation engines. The use of Pinecone's vector database for retrieval augmented generation is crucial for enhancing the quality of generative AI applications. Pinecone is recognized for its user friendliness, reliability, and scalability, making it a popular choice for RAG applications. Studies have shown that by using RAG in combination with GPT-4 can reduce inaccuracies and hallucinations by a considerable amount. One thing I'd encourage you to check out is their pricing page. You can go ahead and check out some different examples that they have preset here for reg applications, classification, and search. And then you can go ahead and just play around with this. So say you have an application and you're using OpenAI. We'll set the vector dimension to 1536. And then let's say you're using a relatively small amount of records. Let's put that down to 100,000. Now for a lot of applications, that amount of records might be larger than what you need. And potentially for some applications, you might not even need to have this many writes per month. So if you just go ahead and look at the queries per month, you can go ahead and really draw this down to really being just pennies a month, especially if you're a hobbyist or just tinkering around with a project idea. So that $100 of free credits will certainly go quite a long way. So to get started with Pinecone, it's really easy to sign up. You can just go ahead, sign up for an account. You can plug in your credit card details to get that $100 of free credits. The other nice thing with serverless Pinecone compared to their pod structure is you're able to have a number of different serverless indexes. Whereas if you were just on their pod tier, it would be very expensive to have multiple pods. So this allows you to easily create a multi-tenant approach where you can segment users data in a way that's appropriate by having different indexes and then subsequently different namespaces within the indexes. I'm also going to be showing you how to set up everything programmatically. So this is just for demonstration's sake. So if you want to make a new index, you can go ahead, create an index. You can give it a name. You can give it the number of dimensions that's specified from your embedding model. You can choose the metric you want to use for measuring the similarity. So if you want to use cosine, or Euclidean or what have you. The other nice thing within the model is you can just go ahead and click setup by model and then you can specify the embeddings model if it's within this list without having to go and find all of these different metrics. So if you're using OpenAI, you can go ahead and click that and then it will go ahead and pull the correct dimensions as well as the metric for you. So right now, like I mentioned, you're only able to use AWS as your cloud provider and it's only available within Oregon or US West too. But like I mentioned, Google Cloud Platform as well as Azure is coming soon. Now, the one thing I did want to mention is pods are still available. So if you do have a higher throughput that you do want to manage is you are able to go in here, specify your pod type, and then it gets started with creating your index that way as well. So that's still there. It's still going to be there. Now, the other nice thing is within the GUI here is you can go ahead and estimate costs straight within here. And there are some good metrics here that you can play around with. I do like that they did include the metadata size within this. Just be mindful of the metadata that you add within your vector database, because if you're adding things that you aren't going to be using is you are going to be increasing 
incurring a higher monthly cost. Now to get into the example, I'm going to show you how to set this up with bun or NPM. So to get started with a new project, you can either go NPM init dash Y, or you can go ahead and bun init. We're going to go ahead and install two dependencies, the pinecone K as well as the OpenAI SDK. Once you've run that, you can go ahead and touch dot env. This is going to be where we're going to put our environment variables. In this example, I'm going to be using OpenAI. You can go ahead and get your API key from platform.openai.com slash API keys. Then you can get your pinecone API key from the left hand side of the pinecone GUI once you're all set up and logged in. Once that's set up, we're going to go ahead and start working through our index.js. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to import OpenAI from OpenAI. We're going to import pinecone. We're going to import dot env to reach for our environment variables. Then we're going to load up all our environment variables from the dot env file. Next, we're going to set up a configuration object. So within here, there's a handful of different values on where you can specify things like the namespace that you want, the index name, the embeddings ID, the dimension, the metric, the cloud, and a bunch of other things. So in this example, I'm just going to do a very simple example of what's my dog's name and look for the top first result. But you can go ahead and change these things. Say if you want to actually return the vectors or if you want to return the metadata or not, you can go ahead and toggle these things back and forth. So the top case, if you want the top three results, you could just go ahead and specify that to three, just as an example. So once we have that set up, we're going to go ahead and set up some data that we're going to embed to OpenAI. So what we're going to send to OpenAI to be embedded is this line here, this text to embed line. And then all of these values are going to be what we put within the data of our Pinecone database. Next, we're going to go ahead and initialize the OpenAI client. So you don't necessarily need to specify API key if you've put it within this environment variable like it's specified here. So you could just go ahead and remove that if you want. Next, we're going to go ahead and initialize our Pinecone client with our API key. Then from there, we're going to set up a function to store our embeddings. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to loop through all of our data embeddings that we just saw right up here. And then once we loop through them, what we're going to do with each of them is we're going to create a unique embedding using the OpenAI endpoint. In this case, we're going to be using the text embeddings eta2 endpoint. And then we're going to be passing in, like I mentioned, the text to embed value. So from there, this is where we're going to specify the ID of when we go ahead and upsert it within Pinecone. So here you see we're adding all of the keys within that object. And then we're going to be uploading the returned embeddings response from OpenAI to our Pinecone database. And then we're just going to simply log that out. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to create a function that queries the embeddings within Pinecone. We're going to be passing in what we had within our configuration query, which is what is my dog's name. And then we're going to go ahead and embed that. It's going to perform that similarity search between that vector of the query as well as what's within Pinecone. Based on the numerical representation of the embeddings, it's going to go ahead and perform that comparison and see which embeddings are closest to what you have queried. Next, to perform the query, what we're going to do is we're going to be simply passing in the index, the namespace, and then we're going to be passing in the configuration that we had for the similarity query. So this is going to be where it passes in whether you want metadata to include values and the number of results that you want to have. Then we're simply going to log out the queries. From there, we're going to just have a simple helper function. What this does is first we're going to check on whether the index exists. And if it exists, it will allow you to either create or delete it depending on the string that you've passed in. If we want to specify to create a new index, you can just go ahead and run manage index, pass in create. First going to check whether it's already there. If it is already there, it's not going to do anything. Otherwise, it's going to create it similar to delete it. It's not going to go ahead and try and delete something that doesn't exist. Next, once we have that all set up, you can just go ahead and run this. So if the index isn't created, it will go ahead and create one for you. And then here you can see that it's returning the top result. And you can see that there's a relatively high score for what we're asking here. You can go ahead and use the metadata. Say if you have a reference and you want to point it back to a particular document or URL, that would be the place that you want to put it is within the metadata here. But that's pretty much it for this one. If you found this video useful, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. And otherwise, until the next one.